I'm Tara Renton and a Professor of Oral Surgery at King's College London and now I run a very large head neck pain service, the largest one outside the US. Interestingly in the UK we have the highest litigation rate against any healthcare practitioners worldwide. I think a lot of it's around chronic pain massively increasing and there are many many non-dental causes of pain that can present as a pseudo toothache. So this whole area of relationship and differential diagnosis I think is very challenging for the dental team without the appropriate training. The trigeminal nerve is really interesting. It's a very complex nerve, it's a very important nerve. Uh, it's the largest sensory nerve in the body. We can actually refer pain to the orofacial region very easily. We're talking about cardiac pain, we're talking about referred neck pain, so psychogenic headaches and facial pain. So this complexity compounds that uh, ability for pain to present, you know, and not as straightforwardly as it could do. There's some really interesting research showing that if you have patients with high anxiety, depression, sleep disorders, those patients are probably 40% more likely to have chronic pain after a simple surgical procedure. So we know that there is this link and we know that chronic pain neural pathways have a 90% commonality with mental health problems. There's very few patients that I don't walk away with actually a clinical diagnosis for pain. Yes, it happens, but it happens incredibly rarely. I mean, it's horrible knowledge to have because we can't fix it, but I can identify it with a screening and then I can refer the patients on to appropriate treatment. It's something that you have to think about when your patient's not responding to treatment as you think they would do. The essentials for a good diagnostic worker are uh, good communication skills fundamentally. It's about taking a good structured history using Socrates, so sight, onset, character, radiation, associated features, timing duration, exacerbating factors and severity. All dentists will be good at excluding odontogenic pain or dental pain and that's your first step. But also think holistically, a lot of those factors that the patient will be telling you will actually lead you to the correct diagnosis before you even pick up your dental mirror and probe, well before you think about taking a dental x-ray or radiograph or doing blood tests down the line. We know that unfortunately implant related nerve injuries are primarily permanent in 95 to 98% of patients and unfortunately 98% of those patients have neuropathic pain. Dental implant related nerve injuries are avoidable and unfortunately devastating for the patients. They're in agonizing pain and this has a massive impact on their lives. The causes, in my opinion, are predominantly when the implant bed drill preparation is taking place. And essentially that drill goes in or near the cortical roof of the inferior alveolar nerve canal or unfortunately breaches that roof and goes into the nerve tissue and causes hemorrhage. Obviously the dental implant materials are biocompatible uh, and that's not what's causing the nerve injuries. It's not an irritation or an infection and it's not the implant placement. If you take into account that many of the implant prep drills are one and a half millimeters longer than the implant itself, then you're working to a 0.5 millimeter safety zone acceptance based on a panel x-ray that has up to 30% magnification. So you're really playing with fire if you're just using a two millimeter safety zone. Bupivacaine, interestingly, is the most neurotoxic of all the local anaesthetics available to dentists. So I avoid it completely. Most implant surgery is done with just articane infiltration. That is the optimal operative pain management for implant surgery. Inferior alveolar nerve relocation is a very specific surgery and has very specific indications. There are some surgeons who do this a lot and they, they should be the surgeons doing it. No one else should have a bash at it because it's a very technique sensitive procedure. And I think generally very rarely indicated. I'm always fascinated with what's happening. Dentistry is like such an interesting area because of the technical aspects, the patient aspects. It's a very broad spectrum. So I, I don't know, I think it'd be very sad if you went to work nine to five every day and just did your job and didn't look outside the window and think actually, how can I make my patient's lives a bit better? And that, that will only improve your own practice and improve your patient's experience of your practice. If you're out there getting new knowledge from, you know, that you're practically spoon-fed at FDI. You've got, you know, all aspects of dentistry there. Hi, looking forward to seeing you in Sydney at the FDI conference in September. The program's fantastic, it's really broad. I'm very privileged to be an invited speaker. Come and enjoy a spectacular venue, 
great conference, meet up with old mates and make some new friends. See you there.